This is the enemy of every perfect 3D print, moisture. And this is our first line of defense. Desiccant and most people like myself use good old silica beads. But when your beads turn from lovely bright orange to this depressing, disgusting green color, they lose all of their ability to dry the air around them and therefore keep your filament dry. So the question is, what is the best way to recharge them to give them back their ability to keep your lovely filament dry? Is it in the microwave? Is it in a filament dryer? And I actually think that my results for the filament dryer are going to be very applicable to people drying silica beads on their print bed because the temperatures and the mechanisms are very similar. I just can't do it because my A1 has no drying function. So I did the most scientific experiment that I could do in my kitchen and workshop to find out the answer. So to make this as fair as possible, we need a controlled experiment. I started off by emptying all of the silica that wasn't keeping my boxes dry anymore. And I put it into this silica bead holder and I kept it out in the air to get it even more saturated. It picked up a nice amount of moisture over that day. I thought it had settled on like a specific dark green color, but then the next morning it was even darker. And then over a couple of days, the color kept changing. So I'm really confident that this is absolutely saturated. It's been sitting in this room that's 40 to 60% humidity for multiple days. So I took that large batch and divided it meticulously. Uh, ignore that, I, I definitely didn't drop, uh, don't, don't look at that. I painstakingly divided it into two identical 314 gram batches with no spills because you didn't see that. Actually, even after that spill, I picked everything that I could off the table and it wasn't off by even one gram or maybe I lost one gram. But I accounted for that in the maths. So 314 grams in two batches accounting for all the spillage. Contender number one is the microwave. So the first batch went into this Pyrex dish. The desiccant with the Pyrex dish weighed 731 grams. Contender number two went into this 3D printed desiccant holder. And again, the holder and the desiccant had a starting weight of 461 grams. So the concept is simple. Which method can remove the most water and how fast? Just a note on the containers of each one. You definitely need Pyrex. If you're going to be putting these in the microwave, you can't use a normal like glass thing because it might just shatter because these things get so hot. Pyrex is needed. In the dryer, it's also kind of tricky. So the first thing that I used to dry these, and this was before I did this weighing, so this doesn't affect the results at all, but it was this thing. It prints with a cover, it goes inside of a spool, you can fill it with beads, and I printed it with translucent pet g the thing is after like multiple rounds of drying the pet g warps very slightly and so the lid no longer fits i couldn't even get the lid out without breaking the lid also you need like another thing on here to like funnel things in and out and that also doesn't fit anymore if you're going to be drying lots of silica in a filament dryer don't use bog standard pet g the next thing I tried, and what I've ran the experiment with, and it hasn't warped at all so far, which is really impressive, is PETG carbon fiber. So this is Bamboo's PETG CF in brick red. But I will leave a comment after I've had like a long time to test this, and I'll tell you if it warps or if I dry it for like weeks and it stays like really pristine, I will also let you know. Also, check out this video about how this print almost failed, but AI and some like vibe coding G code nearly broke my printer, but then saved the rest of the print. So these silica beads are made by Wise Dry. They recommend, uh, depending on the amount of desica that you do like huge nine minute bursts, that sounded like too much to me. I wanted to stir them more often. And also it conflicts with some other advice on the internet. And because I had more silica than their recommendation, I didn't want to take any chances. And also if I did shorter bursts, I had more like data points. So I could tell you more specifically how much water is lost at each stage. So instead I did three minute bursts. It's a normal high power microwave. It's capable of a thousand watts. I did all of this on medium. And this brings me to some important safety points. 
So I think three minutes was also safer because you have more time for it to cool in between and to heat more evenly. Pyrex, as I've said, you'll need like an oven mitt, but it's so hot that you'll also have to mind the stuff you're putting it on. So I was putting it on these scales to measure it, but after like a few rounds, I realized that my scales, the metal on top of the scale was like bulging. I freaked out for a second. I thought like, oh, what if there's like a battery inside that I've that's gonna explode, you know? Luckily I left it and then the bulging went down and I think that was just the metal plate expanding with the metal around it staying the same temperature but just be super careful with this like don't take any chances even after you finish like they will need a long time to cool I don't think you can put them straight into the container they came in so I let them sit out on a table for like 10-15 minutes until they were lukewarm the weight didn't change, so you shouldn't be worried about them picking up like a gram or two out in the open. They, they picked up zero grams that I could measure, and yes, safety is important. They need to cool before you put them anywhere. With that out of the way, let's get into the cold hard stats. After the first three minutes in the microwave, we lost 24 entire grams of moisture, and they looked like this. So really interesting that there was one spot that was super dry and you can see that the edges were still like almost saturated. They had almost not changed at all. And this confirms how important it is to mix it in between different batches. And it made me feel better about doing it in like a larger number of smaller three minute batches. After the second round, it lost a further 16 grams, bringing the total loss to 40 grams. After the third round, we lost another nine grams, bringing that to a total of 49 grams lost. After the fourth round, we lost another four grams, bringing the total to 53. And after the fifth round, we lost only one more gram, bringing the total up to 54 grams. And I was mixing it as carefully as I could between each round. So after five three minute rounds in the microwave, that's a total of 15 minutes at medium power, we lost 17.2% of the wet weight. How does the filament dryer compare? Now I realized as I was doing like a live measurement that my scales were set to mils of milk for no reason. And some of the previous measurements were milk, so I've had to redo them. But luckily only the filament dryer, so the microwave was measured in grams and that was grams. I've got Gemini to help me look through the measurements and calculate some of the percentages and it thinks that it's hilarious. I've made this mistake, so I'm glad that someone thinks it's hilarious that I've measured it in mils of milk. Comment down below if you agree with Gemini. So in the filament dryer I used Pet G drying settings which is 65 degrees for 8 hours. After the first eight hours at 65 degrees C. They only lost 24 grams of moisture, which is pretty much identical to three minutes in the microwave. There was a patch that was really dry and orange and some of it looked almost saturated. After another eight hours in the dryer, they only lost another 11 grams, bringing that total to 35 grams lost. And after the second round, it looked better. It was much more even. To my eye in this lighting, I would actually struggle to tell this apart from fresh brand new gel. I was doing a third eight hour round, but when I realized just how bad it might be, I've decided to take a measurement halfway through and record this video and kind of cut that short. I don't think it's worth another eight hours in the dryer just for like a few small grams. So about halfway through a third round in the dryer, they only lost another three grams. Again, I would struggle to tell this apart from new. It looks really fresh to me. So the total loss after two and a half rounds in the dryer, 20 hours of drying, they lost 12.1% of the wet weight, and that's less than six minutes in the microwave. That is quite remarkable, isn't it? So I always knew that the microwave would be more time efficient, but I was hoping that the filament dryer could still do a good job if you give it long enough, because it's a little bit convenient. Like I like storing my silica beads in the these kind of things that fit inside spools. It's nice to have them in the dryer while it's drying. So I wanted to believe that it was a good way of drying them, but it seems like even if you go through all of that time, they don't get to the dryness that you get with just a few minutes in the microwave. 
So there's a specific hypothesis that I was testing with this and I kind of think the evidence supports this idea. So I noticed that I was drying my silica in the dryer. It was looking lovely and orange afterwards. There's a video that I think is by Lost in Tech, great channel, check them out. And this video said that there's a difference in the humidity level that changes the indicator versus what saturates the beads. And I thought, okay, maybe they're turning orange, but they're still a little bit saturated. But I didn't want to believe that. I wanted to believe that, oh, they're orange, so they're lovely and dry. So I've been drying stuff in the filament dryer and then reusing that silica. But I observed over time that the silica that I was recharging in the filament dryer was much less effective than brand new stuff and I thought maybe that's because like recharging it is possible but you never get it back to where it was like it'll always be 90% it'll never get to a hundred percent of its potential but then after doing this experiment like it could just be that you need to dry them in the microwave you need something better than a filament dryer so I haven't tried drying them on a printer's print bed but I know people do that and I suspect that'll have the same limitation of a filament dryer. I think it will look like it's dried. They'll turn orange, or if you have the older ones, they will change color to the color of new beads. But I think it's just not capable of getting that last bit of dryness out. And it kind of makes sense because the beads are so good at holding on to moisture. And if you think about how dryers work, it is kind of simple. They just heat up the air, they heat up the thing inside that encourages the water to leave them, but it doesn't boil it, it doesn't force it out, whereas a microwave can get them to above 100 degrees and so that can get a huge chunk of the moisture out as we've seen from this data. So let me know down below, what do you think of this video? Did you find it helpful? And I'm really interested in how people recharge their silica beads and if you use your printer bed or if you use a filament dryer, I think that's a minority, but I think this generalizes to printer beds. So if you do use your filament dryer or your print bed, I'm really curious if this has changed your mind and if you would change how you dry your silica beads to the microwave after watching this. If you like this video, I think you'll like my review of the Qi2 E1 filament dryer, which is now my go-to dryer for drying filament. The modularity is great, but there are three key weaknesses that I think you should know about before you buy it. I don't keep that in.